Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, we are here today at the webinar. It's Deb and it's Poppy. And we are here filling in for Matthew. And we're going to do the best we can to fill some big shoes here. <laughs> By we, she means Deb. <laughs> I'm here for tech support. So I'm not answering any of these questions. I'll just let her know when there are questions <laughs> for the record. So. All right. Well, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and fill them in and I will periodically keep checking to see what we do have and we'll go from there. And so let's get started. Today we're going to talk about FISBOs and expireds and how to generate more business. Hmm, my screen won't move. There we go. So just as a reminder, you can go back and watch over um, all the lead gen webinars that we've been hosting. They've been recorded and they've been uploaded onto EliteScoop.com lead gen. They are great resources for you. You are more than welcome to share them with your friends as well. If you have agents outside of the company that you like um, to do business with and you think they might benefit, please feel free to share it with them as well as your fellow agents in your office. We are recording today. The best that we think we are. Um, Matthew is um, away teaching right now, so give him a couple of days before he can go through and edit out all of our craziness and make it look a little bit better. And he will put it up probably maybe over the weekend or beginning of next week. He will definitely send out an announcement on that. So let's get started. Let's talk today about the FISBO. The FISBO is the for sale by owner for anyone who was not aware of that. And FISBOs are a great resource for business if you consistently work them. They will definitely be another avenue for your business and your success. FISBOs have um, a problem, though. Their problem is that they don't have all of the solutions at their hands. And so you are that solution for that for sale by owner. They choose to do for sale by owners because they don't want to pay a commission. If you see that, it says 48% did a survey that said that they did not want to pay the, the commission. They also said that they sold to a friend, neighbor, or relative 21% of the time. Buyers called direct, um, the seller was calling them directly, 18%. Um, the do not wish to deal with an agent was only 6%, which is really interesting when they don't want to deal with an agent at 6% yet, they didn't want to pay a commission at such a much higher rate. The agent was unable to sell the home at seven. Seller had the license, was two, could not find an agent for one, and other is also at 1%. So with all of that said, you can see that their main concern really is just paying that commission. And we'll go through some ways to overcome that as well. The most difficult tasks that um, FISBOs have is getting the right price, Selling within their own time frame, 3%. Only 3% were able to sell their home in the time frame that they wanted. Um, that's a very low number. So that means that's a huge opportunity for us to get out there and market to the FISBOs and to be able to try to capture them as business. Setting the right price has been a big issue because they don't have the resources that we have to be able to show them. They also don't understand all of the paperwork that goes behind it. They don't understand all the process. They really don't understand all we do. I'm not sure anybody out there really <laughs> understands all that we do um, behind the scenes. And there's a lot of steps that we do. They don't necessarily know the accurate way to prepare a home, how to stage it properly to make the rooms look bigger or, or um, just much more enticing. Um, so they really do need our help. So marketing tasks performed by the FISBO, the majority of them only stick signs in the yard. Well, what kind of signage is that? That's all they're doing. What kind of marketing is that just by sticking a sign in the yard? Are we going to stick a sign in the yard and hope somebody comes to the house? We as realtors know that is not fruitful in our marketing. You have to do things like um, print media as well as direct mailers, videos they did 1% of the time. Videos are huge in our marketplace, and yet the FISBO is only doing it 1% of the time. So they're not truly taking full advantage of what all the market can do for you, for them. And this is why they need you. So FISBOs need us for market knowledge, like we just said. Um, we have all of the market knowledge. We as agents have access to all of the websites that give us all of this data. RPR is one of them. 
we um, know our market the best. We know our inventory the best. We know what sellers are looking for when they walk in a home. We know what sellers pricing is, how what they're willing to pay for in a certain area. It is also a full-time commitment to sell a home. This is why they need you because we are agents. We are full-time agents 24 seven for the most part. We are working real estate. We are available. We, they need our commitment. We as agents can typically get them a higher average sales price because once again, we know the market, we know how to price to get them the better um, pricing for their home. We can guide them through the contract. We know our contract, at least I hope we do. It's something we should know um, is knowing our contract. It is our tool. We know the contract well enough to step them through. Are they going to know the loopholes if something happens at home inspection and the home inspection addendum or if the buyer tries to give them a home inspection after the time frame, they're not going to know what to do and what their rights are. That is why they hire us. Professional negotiator. That's a big one. That's another big area that we do. We are all professional negotiators. We should know how to negotiate a contract and be able to negotiate all of the terms of the contract to its fullest extent. Someone who has not been in a real estate community or setting does not fully understand how to negotiate in the best of their ability. Again, this is why they need you. We can qualify buyers before they even come through the door. We can make sure that they're truly buyers, which also kind of ties in with security. Um, we want to make sure that everybody that goes through their home is a ready, willing, and able buyer for them versus just somebody that's, you know, scouting out the house. Security kind of goes hand in hand with that. We have lock boxes for safety. We want to protect homeowners, absolutely. And so when you're talking to FISBOs, this would be a big area that you would want to say to them is security. We're concerned about your security. We would qualify the buyers. We would know everybody that's coming through the home because they'd be coming through with a licensed agent. They get access through a secure lockbox. That's a huge, huge issue with a lot of FISBOs is the lockbox on the door. They don't understand the security of the lockbox. They think they're too easy to break into. Well, the electronic ones are not. They are very hard to actually break into. So security really touch on that when you're talking to them. And then, of course, all the objectivity that comes with it. Um, the average sales price that an agent gets for a home is about six to seven percent higher than what the for sale by owners are getting for their own home. Um, so with that said, you, when you're talking to these FISBOs, you can use that information as I can get you a higher price point that would cover the commission that you would pay out. So again, you're using your negotiating skills to be able to show them the value of them, of them coming to you. Um, and in this particular slide, you can see it's 240,000 versus 185,000. I'm sure the FISBO is gonna want the 240,000 home, okay? 8% of homes are being sold as for sale by owners. That's a really nice piece of the pie right now in our market. That's 8% in our market share, in our Fredericksburg area market. That was not pulled all of the outer counties either. So that's a pretty good piece of the pie that I think we're missing out on. That would be really good to go out and market all of these for sale by owners, especially this time of year um, when they're trying to make their final sale and make their final push here. This could give you a couple more sales at the end of the year. So I think we all need to go hunting. So let's go hunting for FISBOs. How do we do that, Poppy? <laughs> so, so what we do is as you're driving around, you're going to see signs that say for sale by owner. So mark down the address, do, do some market analysis on the subdivision. And then we're going to get into what do we do and what do we deliver here in a few minutes? But first of all, we got to find them. So we're going to look for those signs for sale by owners. We're going to go to militarybyowner.com. This is a great resource. Um, I love this site. You can get a lot of information from here. So you can go in here and you can see people that are trying to sell with an agent, without an agent. You can find out all kinds of information about the house so that you're ready to go and deliver that packet to them immediately. Um, use this website. This is a very good one. I like this one. So you can also go to Zillow. So when you go to Zillow, you can go to make my move. And as you see, you can just type in the address, the city, 
And that's going to pull up all of the homes that are in that market area and then go up to listing type and check which ones we want. We don't want foreclose, pre-foreclose. We want the make me move tab. Okay, those are the ones that you're going to want to look at. Then you can pull up on the little dot, scroll it over, you can pull it up and it's going to give you the information of that home. Click on it and then it pulls up the whole information that the homeowner has put in there about the home and about the property and you can see all of the wonderful information and then now you have another resource to go after. Another resource for you is Craigslist. I just pulled it just this morning. And when I pulled Craigslist this morning, um, I did a 25 mile radius from 22401 and I pulled up over 23 homes that are being sold by for sale by owner only. Um, that's, that's a good chunk right there on one website alone. 23 homes that you guys could go out there and target. This is another cross reference for you. I encourage you to use this one as well. Um, I think we might have a question. Let's take a look. Questions? Can we pick? Oh, no. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. I don't see one. Okay. So you can also purchase um, programs. One of them is Vulcan 7, and the other one is the redx.com. These are um, sites, they're kind of expensive programs, though, just to kind of give you a heads up. But what they do is they will search the FISBOs and the expireds for you. It will include contact information. It's going to walk you through step-by-step. Step. They're pretty user-friendly. I have looked them over and I found them to be pretty user-friendly, um, but again, they are kind of pricey. But it also has a great CRM for you. It provides you with scripts and some call plans and ways to market FISBOs as well as expireds. It, um, this particular one, Vulcan 7, uses big data for their accuracy, and it, it's, pretty, it's pretty slick. So if you're interested in looking into a program that would help guide you through your FISBOs, this would be a good one to look at. There we go. Red X is the other one. Red X is slightly less expensive. Um, it's just not as robust of a database. So it's going to be just kind of do a comparison of the two and see which one you like the best if you're interested in that. So now how do we make that FISBO our client? So how do we do that is it's, it's basically it's all about marketing. So where you go from there is we will you go to the house. You can call them. Please remember your can spam. If you're going to be calling and sending information, remember can spam. If you have any doubts or any questions, go to your managers. Feel free to reach out to me. I can help you with this as well and how to get that information. We want to make sure we're staying within our legal parameters of all of our marketing. You can send any kind of handwritten notes. People love handwritten notes these days. They love getting stuff in the mail because all they ever get in the mail is bills. So they're, they're pretty happy to get handwritten notes. You could also go to Matthew's website. He has a website designed for FISBOs and get some great ideas on how to have a landing page on your website. And so his is at myagentmatthew.com slash FISBO. And there's a lot of resources on there for people trying to sell their home on their own. Um, highly encourage you to go check it out. It, it looks like a really cool page. And that'll give you some great ideas for you to put on your page as well. So now you're going to put together the packet. You've targeted your home and you've targeted your FISBOs. So now you're going to put together the packet. Well, what goes in these packets? You're going to want to get um, white envelopes for sure. Okay. And the reason why you're going to want to get white envelopes is so you can leave notes on that. What are we going to put in these white packets? We are going to put information from N or RPR in there. You're going to do an RPR report. So you should already be targeting subdivisions in your marketing. And if you're finding FISBOs in your targeted market area, you're going to already then basically have a general RPR report already put in the packet. If it's a new FISBO, run information on that subdivision. Very generic um, for RPR. So what's the market doing right there? What's going on right there? You want to show your value. Why they need you is because you know the market. Run a CBX report as well. Show them this, you know, CBX is cool. So show them the wonderfulness of all the marketing, all of the abilities that you can provide 
as well as all of the info for the surrounding areas, that they probably have no clue that the house down the street just sold for you know thirty thousand dollars higher than what they what you think. Um, you're going to want to do a really nice cover letter to give them info on how to sell. Again, make it make it generic because you want them to want to come back to you. Okay, so give them a cover letter that gives them info on how to sell. Basic things like. Do you have an attorney in mind? Do you have home inspectors in mind? All of those good things that we know we need. Um, you're going to want to have a summary of all of the documents. There's a lot of documents. We know that there's a lot of contract um, info. So have a summary of the documents ready for them. Have, give them some little um, appetizing kinds of things that say what they really need to know in that body of the contract as far as financial addendums, as far as home inspection items. You're also going to want to give them your resume along with res references. Um, with the resume, you want to have all of it up to date, okay? With the references, if you haven't been able to get actual references from clients, no worries. You can get it from Real Satisfied. You have, you all have tons of those on there from Real Satisfied. You can get those printed out and attach those as your references. The for sale by owner wants to see your credentials. So make sure you've got those ready to go in that packet as well. And then the final thing that you want to have in there is marketing. What are you going to do to market their home? How are you going to market their home? This would be a great place for you to say, if you want to see how I'm marketing another listing, feel free to look up and give them an address of a house that you currently have listed. They're going to want to see videos on there, the photographs. We're all using professional photography. They're going to want to know all of that. What else are you going to do to market? Think outside the box of what you're going to do and have it in your plan so that they can see the value that you are bringing to the table. So now you're going to have all of this put together and you're going to put it in a little white envelope and we're going to knock on the door. Yes, yes, yes. I know it's very uncomfortable, but we are going to go knock on the door. It is, I know, scary, but we have to do very uncomfortable things so we can get comfortable with our job. We have to do uncomfortable things so we can reach that next level. So we're going to go knock on that door and we're going to, and they're going to come to the door and they probably will say hello because that's usually what people do when they answer a door. They don't usually yell at you. And they're going to basically, you're going to say, hello, I'm really sorry to be interrupting your day, but I see you're trying to sell your home. And I have this packet here that is very valuable that I think you two will find valuable. My business card is attached inside. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to you further. Or as you move forward, I'd be happy to talk to you as well. And then you can run as fast as you can to your car and get the heck off their, their <laughs> driveway. That's fine. Um, and the more you do that, you do become more comfortable with that. So, but you got to start somewhere. Now, the best is when someone's not there, because if no one's there, then you don't have to talk to anybody. And I know we realtors, we don't like to talk. So why would we want to talk to somebody? <laughs> um, so this is why we use a white envelope. So you can write that same message on the outside saying, I'm really sorry I missed you, but I have some resources in a packet here that I think you're going to find very valuable. Please take some time to look it over. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If there's anything I can do to help you, please feel free to reach out to me. You're basically giving them this huge packet of information. Obviously, they want to sell their home. Obviously, it's not selling. So give them the info, okay? All right. If it's a house that you really are after, like you really want that house and you've kind of been courting them a little bit, leave them a small gift. A small gift can be something like... Um, I don't know, maybe a movie gift card, maybe a Starbucks gift card, you know, give them a little something along with something that shows your value. Don't just be kind of stalkerish and be like, <laughs> oh, here's a gift. Um, you know, you want to give them the packet of info along with it, but it doesn't hurt to give them some, a small little gift basket. So let's talk a little bit about scripts. All right. So scripts are fun and scripts can be bad. I'm a believer in scripts as long as you take that script and you make it your own. If you are sitting and reading a script that just basically says, are you the owner? Hi, I am Deb with Coldwell Banker Elite, 
there's no value in what I'm saying to you. So obviously you want to read over an example script and say, hi, I'm Deb with Coldwell Banker Elite and I have this packet of value for you. So make it your own. There's tons of different resources with different scripts. You can even get some from Zillow. Make Me Move has some dialogue for door knocking. Um, it gives you some great questions. Have them in the back of your mind as far as what it is you want to ask and what it is you want to say, but do not read it to them. That's when scripts go completely all wrong. Um, if you need some more resources on scripts, I've got some. I'd be more than happy to share with you guys for ideas. Be persistent. Persistency will pay off. You have to keep working the lead. It Sometimes it's like dating and you just have to go back into that courtship and really just kind of keep working on them and keep working on them and keep working on them. But man, when they're ready to pounce, they are ready to pounce. So you've got to be ready the minute that they are too. So you're, you're courting them and courting them and doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden one day they say, I need you to come over now. Well, I'm not ready. Well, you should have been ready. So be ready in advance. Have that listing agreement and paperwork with you when you go to their house for that appointment. You want to show you're ready to put that house on the market that day. You want to show, once again, that is a sign of value. Okay, have your paperwork ready to go. Oh. And then another thing that we can you can do is you can offer the exclusive um, right to sell versus the exclusive agency listing. So the exclusive agency would allow you to work with them to find the buyer. But if a buyer that they had already shown the home to comes back, you they wouldn't have to pay the commission unless they chose to represent you at that time. So there's two different listings that you can take on and you can explain this to your sellers or to the FISBO. And this way you can work with them at the same time and you're helping them but you're protecting what their biggest concern is. Because remember, we said earlier, their biggest concern is commission. So if they brought in the buyer, then we would be able to say, OK, we, we can still kind of help you. Um, just be very careful in making comments that say, I will remove myself completely from the transaction, because then you're not showing the value. Talk to your brokers. There's many ways that that can be worded. We'd be more than happy to help you with how to word those contracts to protect both sides there. Okay. But don't forget, you can do the exclusive agency listings. Do we have any questions on any of that before I move into expired? I don't see any hands up either. Oh, okay. let's go to attendees. Hmm? Uh, questions? Over there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, there's some hands. Are those hands just left up? Uh, I think they their just... hands left up. Okay. Yeah. Angel, you don't have a question, do you? Uh, no, I don't. Nope. Nope. Just hands okay. left up. Okay. All right. So we will move right along to the expired listings then. So how do we identify expired listings? Well, again, if you are farming a subdivision, you should be able to know what's going on in your subdivision. It's not going. There we go. So in your farming subdivision, you need to see what's expired. You can set yourself up on the MLS, and we'll get to that here in a second, as to how to get those alerts immediately. What is the reason why it, listings typically expire? Overpriced. The majority of them are overpriced. They didn't sell because they were overpriced. So this is where we can come in and really kind of help them. So how do we locate them? We locate them through the MLS. You can set yourself up as a contact, run the search and save it, and then you set up your auto email and choose daily. So what you do is, this is what it looks like. You choose your county, choose expired, choose your price point, if there is a price point. I don't usually choose a price point, but you can. Off market in the last how many days, okay? Then you set this up as the auto email. So you go down to the bottom and it's basically an auto email and then you save it, it comes to you. I always recommend hitting it to come to you ASAP. So the minute it expires, you're going to know. You can then get on the phone and check. Once again, check your do not call and check to make sure that they did not relist before you make that call, okay? 
double check, ensure the home hasn't been relisted. I also say look and see who the listing agent was as well so that you are fully aware that if it was somebody in your office or somebody within our company that you're fully aware of who had the listing prior. The initial call, you're going to want to call fast. If you can reach them, if it happens in the morning that you get that email or late at night and you get the email, call first thing in the morning. And I don't mean like 6 a.m. first thing, like after 9 a.m. first thing, but as soon as possible to get them on the phone. Do not assume that the seller knows that they have expired. The seller might not know. It could very well have been, you know, the brother is listing their home and the agent just forgot to do the extension or for did the extension, but forgot to update the MLS. So do not ex assume that anybody knows because the seller might not e have even knowledge of it. Focus on how you can help them and not how that prior agent failed. Because again, you don't know the relationship between that prior agent and it's never good to bad mouth anybody and say, oh, they failed for this reason and they're terrible. Okay. That's not at all what you want to do to get somebody's trust. Okay. So focus on how you can help and not how the other one failed. Listen, 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 listen. They will talk. If they are frustrated, they are going to talk. They are going to tell you everything. This phone call is a time for you to listen, address their concerns. They will tell you, try to get the appointment. That is your goal is to listen and get an appointment. You are not going to get that listing over the phone. Don't try to. Don't try to sell yourself over the phone. Try to sell yourself to get the appointment. So you would say things like, I understand your concerns and, and um, I have empathy for whatever they're saying. Those are great phrases to keep saying. You're not acknowledging what the agent did was right or wrong. You're just acknowledging that there was an issue and that there are concerns. At that point, you can say, I will address all of this in my marketing strategy with you when we sit down at the appointment. Does Friday at 10 work or does Saturday at 10 work? Um, you know, just keep always closing for that appointment. You're going to want a fast appointment. So if that house expired today and these people are frustrated, they still have a need to move. They're going to want a fast turnaround. You're going to need to be ready to move again. So again, if you're calling at 10 a.m. in the morning and you got them on the phone, you need to be prepared to do a listing appointment that same day with them. Again, you're finding your expireds in your subdivisions that you're marketing. So you've already got a leg up. You already know what's going on in that subdivision. You should be constantly embedded in that subdivision activity. So it'll be much easier for you to talk to them about. Okay. If you can't get them on the phone and you've checked again to make sure that they did not relist, you could always stop by the house and leave them a handwritten note. Leave your marketing plan. Leave a personal brochure. Um, again, if you want to leave a gift, you can leave a gift. Um, this is a big one. I, I know that a lot of agents do this instead of calling. I always recommend calling because if they truly expired and they're ready to interview, they're setting up appointments to interview that day. But sometimes we can't get phone numbers. Sometimes they're do not calls. So you just need to take them something of value and leave it on the on their porch. Handwritten notes are fabulous. And it can be something just as simple as I understand that your listing has expired. If you are interviewing agents, I would love the opportunity to compete for your business and tell you all that I can do to market your home. It's plain, it's simple, it's using proper words that are going to grab somebody's attention that says, oh, I should interview other agents. Um, and then you can go forward from there, okay? The seller of an expired has a couple of options. They're either going to relist with their current agent and they had no clue that their listing expired. They're either going to take the house off the market they're going to possibly list it as a for sale by owner, or they're going to contract with you to sell their home. Our goal is to get them to contract with you to sell their home. <laughs> you are the experts. We have the market share. We have all the tools and resources. We have it all here. So with that said, we need to meet with them. We need to have total expectations that we are going to have a frustrated seller. Our, they are just going to be frustrated because their house didn't sell in the time span that they felt it should have sold. You need to set yourself completely apart. We say this all the time. 
in the beginning as well as now, it's even more critical now to show how valuable you are and how your tools and resources are completely different than everybody else's out there in the market. Put your listening ears on. They are very frustrated. They really want you to listen and feel that you are, have their back and that you are going to come in and solve all of the world's problems. Be honest with them, but listen. You need to be very prepared when you go in and only accept something that's sellable. Do not take an overpriced listing. There is nothing worse than having an overpriced listing that sits and then everyone gets frustrated and it just doesn't end well. So if their expectations are still way too high, it's not worth taking altogether. Okay. So do we have any questions yet? <laughs> are you guys still out there? Yeah. All right. Well, we just gave you some really good ideas on um, tools and resources to use. And so now it's time to put them all in action. We are in our last quarter. And I know the Massaponics office has heard me say many a times, let's finish this year really strong. So I encourage all of you to go out and let's conquer some FISBOs and some expires and get a couple more listings before the year ends and set ourselves up for a fabulous 2018 and we will have a wonderful spring. And if there are no questions, don't forget, this will be up on Elite Scoop. You can go back and rewatch it. And I thank you for your time. I'll stay on if there's any questions. <laughs>